So, we're in 2018 now. How's that been for you? Been good, bad, and not sure yet. Uh, I've been excited for 2018 uh, for a little while now because I believe that 2018 is going to be a big year for our church. Uh, I believe God's going to do some incredible things and things that we can't even see yet. But uh, I was praying a few months ago about this uh, coming year and I asked God for direction for our church and uh, where do you want us to go in this coming year? What do you want us to look like? What do you want us to be about? Uh, what do you want us to be doing? And I, I just ask him. Uh, he's, he, ask, he tells us to ask him for what we want. And so uh, I ask him for a word uh, that might guide us through this year. And he gave me one. He pressed uh, this on my heart uh, a couple months ago. And the word for our church this year is focus. We're going to focus. Uh, we're going to spend this year getting our focus. And so... I believe that, that we need to take some time to do that as a church. and um, So in the next five weeks, this is going to be one message over five weeks about focus. And so um, if you miss one Sunday in the next five weeks, you're going you're gonna to miss out on 20% of the message, kind of. It's going to be one message, five weeks, and so you want to be here for the next five weeks as we talk about the direction of our church. And so... Before we go any farther today, I want to pray for us one more time, uh, and then we will jump into God's Word, all right? All right. So, Father, we, uh, we come to you today, and we thank you that you are God alone. And, God, that you have a reckless kind of love for us, God, where you're chasing us down. God, you're pursuing us. God, you, we can't run away from your love because it chases us down. God, we, uh, we come to you today and we're going to talk about focus. And so God, I pray that, that you would open our eyes and open our ears and open our hearts, God, to receive the word you have for us today. God, I pray that you would just uh, be our guide right now. And God, I know that this doesn't matter how it comes out, but God, would you help me in that area? But God, I, I pray more than you would help us as it comes out, but God, that you would help us take it in. Um, God, that we, this wouldn't just bounce off our ears or bounce off our brains, but God, that it would sink deep into our hearts. And God, that it would change us from the inside out. God, today we love you and we trust you and we're relying on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I thought it would be uh, fitting in a message series about focus that we just go ahead and define focus uh, right at the very beginning. That way we're all on the same page. Uh, so focus is the center of interest, activity, attraction, or attention. It's the center of interest, activity, attraction, or attention. It is the direct it is directed attention or direction. It means to pay particular attention to. And it also can mean the focal point of a lens on, on which rays converge or from which they diverge. So, do you get it? Yeah. Uh, that's a lot to take in, so I want to explain focus a little bit different way. Uh, focus is the center of your aim. It's the center of your aim. So it's what your life is aiming towards. It's what direction you're going in. And so uh, to illustrate this, I brought this handy dandy tool. Uh, maybe you guys seen these before. Uh, I remember when I was young, my uh, granny always had magnifying glasses and uh, she used them to read her Bible or the newspaper or whatever it was but I can remember playing many days with a magnifying glass this is not one of those uh, this is actually 94 cents at Walmart if you need a magnifying glass some of you look like you might need a magnifying glass and so uh, 
here's kind of how this magnifying glass works, okay? So uh, it catches uh, light in this round part here. And all of that light, because of the shape of the lens, it all kind of centers in one place. Now, the opposite effect is what makes it, you be able to see stuff better. But um, the way I really know about micro, uh, my magnifying glasses, you should know what this is before you use it in a sermon illustration. Uh, is you can take these outside, this is what I hear on a sunny day, and you can catch the sun just right in the sky, and you can aim this at ants. <laughs> and you may or may not be able to fry those ants. You also, don't try this at home, but... You can also catch pieces of paper on fire. So I hear. Uh, I never done that, of course. But um, So basically how a magnifying glass works is it directs all the energy into one spot. It brings it all down into one of the... It's a teeny, weeny, little bitty spot. It focuses all of the energy in that one spot, and it gives it power. And that's really what I mean when I'm talking about focus for our church. It's that all of our power, all of our focus, all of our energy would come into one spot. And that we wouldn't be here and there and everywhere as a church, but we would be directed into one spot where everybody's working for a, a common purpose. Everybody's working for the same thing. And when you start working for the same thing, and I start working for the same thing, and everybody in here starts working for the same thing, man, things begin to happen. Power comes from focus. We have to be focused as a church. We can't be um, here and there and everywhere. We have to... Focus in on one spot so that our energy is not divided, but that it would be unified. <coughs> it means for us in the coming year that we narrow our focus. We can't do everything and do everything well. We can't do everything and do everything well, one of our core values as a church, one of the things that we said wants to guide the way we do things is do it well. And so as a church, if we can't do it and do it well, then we don't want to do it. We have to be committed to that, and then that hurts sometimes. It hurts sometimes. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort, but we're committed to Excellence. Now, as I was thinking about this this week, I thought I had rather do a few things with excellence than do everything with mediocrity. I'd rather do one or two things really well as a church than do everything and everything's a mess. Here's what I know about you guys. Not just you guys, but everybody here. Um... You're some of the most talented and gifted people I know. Really. I, I, I'm not just uh, blowing smoke this morning. I believe that the people in this congregation are some of the most talented and gifted people on the planet. But here's the downfall of people who are talented and gifted. You try to be lone rangers. Try to do it all on your own. Try to work it all on your own. But guys, we're never at our best when we're working alone. We're never at our best when we're divided, but we're at our best when we're unified together, working around one purpose and one calling. Where there is focus, there is power. Where there is focus, there is power. And that's why the tactic of the enemy against both us corporately as a body and as you individually, is this word called distraction. 
And distraction is the enemy of focus. And so it's one of the enemy's most powerful tools against us because we don't see it coming. I believe that the enemy would love nothing more than for us to lose our focus as a church. To take our eyes off the most important things and um, start worrying about this or that or the other and lose our focus. Because when we forfeit our focus, we lose our power. We become ineffective. There can be no power in a divided church. A divided church can't reach its community. We have to be fiercely committed to unity. When the church of Jesus Christ is unified with focus, the earth has never seen such a powerful force. Listen to me. There is nothing, nothing, that the church or this church cannot do with the power of the Holy Spirit when we set our minds to it. Amen. Nothing. If we will set our minds, center our focus, lean on the Holy Spirit, you cannot dream big enough to outdo what God could do. You cannot imagine. You cannot fathom what God might do. If people. Decided to lay off everything else. And be unified. The enemy desires that you get so caught up in what he said or she said. Or what they did or what they didn't do. That causes you to lose your focus. Uh, I got an illustration, Mike. If you could grab that for me, that would be awesome. Uh, the enemy desire, desires to divide us, to separate us, because uh, if he can divide us, then he can defeat us. What's he doing? You are awesome, Mike. Thanks so much. Uh, so, I had this uh, thought last night, and it's a little crazy. I uh, don't really know what to do with these. Uh, but do you know what this is? It's a splitting wedge. Okay? And so, uh, I'll show you kind of how this works in a minute, maybe. But uh, I want you to know that uh, at a very young age, my dad acquainted with me with one of these very well. So, uh, it was actually this wedge, and so... Uh, me and this wedge have been friends for a long time. And I just want to encourage you, I'm not a parent, but it worked for me. And so if you have uh, boys who may be a little overly energetic, uh, this and this plus this, great parenting tool. Promise you. I promise you. And so uh, here's kind of how this works. Uh, this one looks a little easier. So you take this. You set it right here. You try to hold all this together. And this may not work out for me. I should have really tried it before we done this. But uh, that's a good idea, Keith. I know you came to church today. Uh, I will clean this mess up if you're worried about that. And I also think that this wedge works better. So. This is always a good idea until people are watching you do it. See, what happens is you get a little bit of the wedge in there. Once you get it started, it don't take much to divide it. Do you see how that's working? And the enemy has some wedges. And those wedges... They're wedges of gossip. They're wedges of unforgiveness. They're wedges of anger. Malice. These wedges are dangerous. 
These wedges are dangerous. Because these, these wedges, once they start in, it gets easier and easier to divide a church with them. And so the enemy is, is trying to drive these in to each and every church, even our church. Discontentment, self-centeredness, thinking that church is all about you and your needs, and just when it's convenient for you, These are dangerous. These are from the enemy. We have to get these out. We cannot keep these in our church and go forward in 2018 the way God wants us to. The enemy desires to divide us so that he can conquer us. We got to decide that we're not going to give in to gossip. Somebody starts gossiping, say, no, not interested, don't want to know, don't need to know. We can't give in to self centeredness. And that's our, that's our natural pull is to go towards self centeredness. But Jesus calls us to die to ourselves. Paul said, I die daily. We have to die to our own desires. We've made church about us so many times. And if you come into this place self-centered and worried about yourself, then you come into this place and you worship yourself on Sunday morning. That's dangerous. Satan's plan is to divide and distract the church. To render it ineffective. In Matthew uh, 12 verse 25. Uh, Jesus says. Knowing their thoughts. He said to them. Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. And no city or house divided against itself will stand. If we can't stand together, we can't stand. We are the body of Christ. And we have to be fiercely committed to unity in our body. United we stand and divided we fall. We're called to focus as a church. The enemy divides and distracts, but sometimes he distracts us using good things. Did you know that the enemy will use good things to distract you from God things? I, I don't know if you got that, but I just want to give it to you one more thing. One more time. The enemy will use good things to distract you from God things. So every good thing that comes into your life, it's not necessarily a God thing. Now we know that every good and perfect gift comes down from above, but uh, we know that the enemy can twist those gifts. <coughs> he can twist good things to distract us from God things. But myself, I'd rather have one God thing than a thousand good things. I'd rather be involved in one God ministry at church than a thousand good ministries at church. Satan wants to make the church so busy with good things that we schedule God right out of our calendars. My question for you this morning is, have you got some good things in your life that are distracting you from God things in your life? Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a hobby. Maybe it's a 
a habit, maybe it's a job, maybe it, it, it's uh, any number of things, but it could be a good thing that's not a God thing. And if it's a good thing and not a God thing, then I would suggest getting rid of it. We're about to do our uh, calendar for the church for 2018. Um, we're running a little bit behind schedule, but uh, we'll get most of it in anyway. Uh, but here's what I don't want to do in 2018. I don't want to fill the calendar up with good things. I, I don't want to fill the calendar up with good things. Just to say that we have a lot going on at church. I would rather us do one God thing this year than a thousand good things. Let's be committed as a church. Let's do the God things and leave everything else behind. Satan will make you focus on secondary issues so that you lose focus on primary issues. He'll get you so caught up in the secondary that you lose sight of the primary. I normally don't go here, but that's the reason that we have so many denominations. Because people got so focused on secondary things that it divided them. And they couldn't see that, that what unified them was greater than what divided them. And so for a long time, Satan's had the church distracted with secondary issues. And we've lost focus of the primary thing. And that's that we're all saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, whatever might come that divides us, that which unifies us is greater. Jesus is always greater. What unifies us is always bigger than what divides us. Let's not get divided. In uh, Ephesians 4, Paul says uh, this. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Listen to this. Eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body. And one spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Who is over all and through all and in all. Paul is speaking to the church at Ephesus and he's also speaking to the church at Bond. And he says, you've been called to walk in humility and in love and in patience and in peace. We're to be eager, eager to keep the unity of the Spirit. Paul reminds us in this passage of Scripture that that which unites us is far greater than what divides us one Body, one spirit, one baptism, one faith, one Lord, and one God. And you know, we have one mission. And that mission is to make the name of Jesus great in our community and in our world to the point where people can place their faith in Him and be saved. And that's what it's all about, church. It's all about reaching lost people. If you wonder what's on the heart of God this morning, if you wonder what's bothering God this morning, it's lost people. That's what's on God's mind this morning. He loves us that are saved. He loves us that have been born again. But His heart this morning is breaking for lost people. I want you to focus in just for a moment. We can't.
cannot afford to lose our focus in 2018. The stakes are much too high. We're not playing games here. Church is not a game. We're dealing with eternity. God has planted us strategically, me and you. He's planted us in this place for such a time as this. He planted us to be light in the darkness. Hope in the midst of hopelessness. I don't know if you know this or not, guys, but we're on the front lines of a war against hell for the souls of the people in our community. And we can't afford to lose our focus. Not with the souls of people weighing in the balance. We can't afford to get caught up in petty arguments or simply doing good things. Not with people's eternities on the line. And you know what? I know that in the moments when there's arguments or when there's frustrations or when you feel like you've been done wrong or you feel like somebody else has done wrong, I know that that can seem monumental and I know it can seem heavy and I'm sure that it feels that way. But church, I want you to know that it hails in comparison To the fact that there's a lost soul out there somewhere. And every minute that you spend arguing. And every minute that you spend fighting. And every minute you spend in unforgiveness. Is another minute gone by. That we haven't reached somebody for Christ. I want you to realize this this morning. That people who don't trust Christ for their salvation. They go to hell. People who don't hear, they go to hell. It's up to us. Every second there's people around the world dying, lost. In 2018, we need to be committed to leaving behind pettiness. Leave behind distraction. and Let's focus on eternity. Let's focus on the things that matter. Let's focus on making a difference in our community. I want to read one scripture to you and then I'm going to close. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Father, we come to you today And I think all across this room we could admit that we've lost our focus on you. God, uh, we've let secondary things become primary things. God, we've given in to the good things and left behind God things. God, I think all across this room we could say that, that we've fallen short. But God, we thank you this morning for your grace. God, we thank you that you're always enough for us. And God, we ask that in 2018, God, that you would help us regain our focus. God, that you would help us set our eyes on you. God, that you would help us leave behind anything that's not of you. And that you would help us run towards Jesus, set our focus on Jesus, set our focus on eternity. God, I pray that... You'd do a work in us right now. 
God, we love you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name.